Hi everybody, I'm Stin Mander and I'm at home in the garage today working on my jet skis. I'm gonna call this video, All Adhesives Are Not Created Equal. This will be part two of installing the traction mats onto the jet skis. So yesterday I was able to get all of this area cleaned off and this is what it looked like before. You can see the traction mats were all coming off. It's up there, it's the same. And they'd been repaired by the previous owner using different kinds of glues. And man, did I have a hard time with it. So I figure I'll take this opportunity to show you what I've been using over the years to take glues off. I have an RV, I've had several RVs over the years. And here's a lineup of various products that I've used. And I figured I'd share that with you so that when you go to the store, you can um, pick the one that works best. Before we get started with all this stuff, just remember the idea that like dissolves like. Now, without getting too deep into the chemistry, you all know that when you wash something with water, for example, um, salt, sugar, dirt, that'll just come right off. You don't need anything else. But when you, feel, you want to get off grease or oil, then you use soap. So basically, you're changing the water, which is a solvent, to match the thing that you're trying to uh, remove. That's exactly the same as removing glue. Just remember, like dissolves like. So let's get started. Some of these products you can buy at the store today, and they're designated with the green cards. And some of these products are no longer available either by the manufacturer um, at all, or they're available in a different state because California has strict air pollution rules. So first one is regular old brake clean. Brake clean is good because it takes grease off, oil off, without leaving a residue. Okay, so um, this brake clean, you can get it at Napa or various other places. And it's the active ingredients are acetone and heptane. Acetone is a very strong solvent. It, it, it will damage plastic. It will hurt your eyes. Heptane is a petroleum destillate. It's good for removing oils and greases. So that's what you got in, in um, brake clean. It does not leave a residue. That's why they use it on brakes. The next is a Max 4810 brake parts cleaner. I got that at Napa. Um, it says ultra low VOC because the state of California does not allow you to have things that evaporate quickly anymore. It's part of the air pollution um, uh, controls. Okay, so I wrote it down here so we can keep track of all this stuff. Again, this product contains acetone. That's the first ingredient. That's the most. Then it has something called methyl acetate and toluene. These two are petroleum destillates. Um, again, it's designed like dissolves like so this is designed to remove oil well it does not leave a residue it's designed for breaks it will also take certain um, adhesives off and also grease so so basically it's the same thing very very similar to brake clean but look instead of heptane they're using methyl acetate and toluene and yes you can buy that in the stores today um, let's move on to two products marketed by Walmart. This is a, their Supertech brand. It's called Brake Parts Cleaner, non-chlorinated. Again, first ingredient is acetone. Then we see toluene again. And now they are inclu they're including methanol. Alcohols dissolve different kinds of, of things. They also are good at taking off grease. So here you see you've got the acetone and you've got the petroleum destillate, but you're, they're including methanol because that will take some um, adhesives off and also some other types of chemicals. Remember, like dissolves like. So let's move on. This one is also super tech. This is a new old stock can. My neighbor gave it to me. He had it in the garage for a couple of years. You cannot buy this in the store anymore. That's why um, it's I designate it with a pink card. And interestingly enough, its first ingredient is methanol and its second ingredient is acetone. So again, this is a product designed to take off grease and dirt and also not leave a residue behind. So methanol and acetone, and no, you can't buy this product in the store anymore. 
this was particularly good at taking the adhesive off the traction uh, mats on the jet skis. Remember, these jet skis, STX-12F Kawasaki, they were made in 2007, and using the four-stroke technology doesn't smoke um, like my two so my old two-cycle skis. And here's the engine. You can see four cylinders, and we'll talk about changing the oil in our next video. And there's its companion ski. Again, same thing, STX-12F. And what we're trying to do is get this glue off right here. So back to our lineup. Next to WD-40, they don't tell you what's in it. They just say petroleum destillates. So that means some of them will evaporate very, very quickly, and some of them won't. So we'll get back to that in a minute. It's an important distinction. Okay, um, here, Clean Strip uh, makes acetone. You can buy it at Friedman's, or you can buy it at a paint store like uh, Kelly Moore, or you can buy it at, um, at Home Depot, Lowe's, and that's very good at taking off um, glue, but you got to be really careful because it will dissolve plastic. So you have to try it on a very sort of a little area that it doesn't show to make sure that it doesn't eat up the surface that you're trying to clean. Do not use any kind of plastic bowls or containers with it because they'll become cloudy and get dissolved. Acetone is some strong stuff and we'll talk about PPE in a minute. Next is alcohol. Now with COVID, I'm not sure how they sell alcohol anymore, but I used to be able to get it. You probably still can. Denatured alcohol. Denatured means you can't drink it. If you do, it'll make you barf. Um, they don't um, sell methanol. This is ethanol. Um, the difference between methanol and ethanol is methanol is made from wood. Ethanol is made from grains. Um, the kind of alcohol that you drink as booze is ethanol. But you can't drink this one because it's denatured. It has stuff in it to make you barf. So this is ethanol. And you can buy it, I believe. Some kind of alcohol is available for purchase. Again, you want to get the kind that comes in a metal can for like cleaning paintbrushes. If you're working with shellac, which is a sort of a, a lac beetle product that they used to put on wood years ago. But the point is, the alcohol you get at like um, Safeway or at um, CVS has water in it. So you want to try and get alcohol designed for cleaning paintbrushes and stuff so it's the full strength. So this is alcohol. Yes, you can buy it. The next product, I think you can still buy this. This was a new all stock can that I had in my garage. It's called Goof Off. It's the original Goof Off, not the one that is more environmentally friendly that's based on orange oil. This is xylene and toluene. It stinks. So um, you need to wear gloves. You need to have, if you see in the garage, I've got the, the door open, the big door open. I've got the side door open. So I've got a draft through here. It is cold today. Wow, about um, 48 degrees. So this stuff stinks. It will also take off um, like rubber marks that's, that, are on, that are on your driveway. So if you have a, a sealed a concrete driveway, this will take off rubber marks. It'll also take off certain kinds of glues. Um, it's um, xylene and toluene. It stinks. Um, it's in a special can with a tight sealing lid. And again, some of these destillates evaporate really, really quickly. For example, acetone. I mean, very, very quickly. In the case of Goof Off, You'll be using it for about four or five seconds, depending upon the temperature outside, and then and then some of it's already evaporated and it won't work anymore. So keep that in mind. Just because you still have product on your towel doesn't mean it's going to work. Next is by Stoner. This is um, basically it's called Bug uh, Bug Terminator. Removes tar bugs and sap. And all it says it's petroleum destillates. Um, I'm guessing it's going to have, have methyl ketone in it, which is a very, very highly uh, volatile petroleum destillate. Um, it's in a spray can. Anytime that you see something in a spray can, they put it in a spray can. A, it's easy to get uh, onto your surface. But B, it's for stuff that evaporates very, very quickly. This took our uh, my second glue off quite well, except that it stopped working in about three seconds, even though there was still product left on the towel. We'll talk about that in a minute. So this is uh, um, basically 
um, tar and bug remover, you can get it from a auto parts store. Now let's talk about some of the things that I've been using in the past, which you cannot get anymore. This is an industrial grade um, uh, glue remover, and it was expensive. Look at the, all those years ago. I don't know, 10 years ago or more, $18 a can. This was marketed in the RV industry to remove adhesives. It's made by Kent Automotive. Acrisol is the name. Number is P60170. High performance body solvent, basically to remove adhesives. And look, look at the ingredients. You'll start to recognize this stuff. Xylene, a very, very lightweight um, uh, a petroleum destillate. Propane, that's the stuff that you burn in a camp stove. Butane, that's the stuff you burn in a cigarette lighter. And ethyl benzene. These things are very, very light and they're good at dissolving glue without messing up the surface. So again, if you see it in a spray can, that's why it's in a spray can, because it's very, very volatile, and that's probably why they don't sell it in California anymore. This stuff is great. I have a tiny, tiny bit of it left. I don't even know if you can buy it anymore. You can definitely not buy it anymore in California. I bought it from um, a commercial... Uh, uh, window installer for cars and sunroof installer he had a big can of it and i and i for like twenty dollars he gave me this and half full poured some out from his big can this is cr lawrence general purpose solvent and adhesive remover category uh catalog number crl 2032 um i'm gonna do some investigating and see if this is available somewhere that's not california I use it like, I don't know, once a year, but when I really need to remove a glue, this works extremely well. Look at the can. It's a tight sealing can with a little tiny spout. Again, this stuff evaporates very, very quickly, and that's probably why they don't um, sell it anymore. It was for removing the glue around windows in my RV. It's ingredients, it says VM, don't know what that is. P naphtha, that's another one of those petroleum destillates. And toluene, recognize toluene from the what we talked about before? And no, it's not available anymore. Another one, at least not in California where I can find it, another one that worked very, very well is Malco A&L Cosmoline Remover. Again, this was a lightweight oil. As you can see by the, um, by the bottle, it doesn't evaporate that quickly, otherwise they would have put it in a can xylene recognize that and then there's some other ones this one is called aliphatic petroleum destillates no idea what that means we could look it up i suppose and ethyl benzene benzene that's another um, pet lightweight petroleum destillate and no this is not available in the stores anymore i don't know if they still make that pr that process or that product anymore so again, when using all of these things, you need to have proper PPE. Wear your, your safety glasses. You don't want to get that in, into your eyes. I was wearing this. This is a chemical respirator. I mean, even with the doors open, it stinks, particularly goof off and acetone. Um, even brake clean, anything that contains acetone. I mean, it's really, really strongly smelling. So I was wearing my, chem not a paper mask, but a chemical respirator. I was using a heavier type of glove. These are latex gloves. Got to remember, some people have latex allergies. So you could use nitrile gloves, even better. Um, but if you were to use the thin kind of glove like these, this does not work. These thin nitrile gloves, um, the, uh, they get absorbed or dissolved by the by the chemical so this does not work don't use those gloves um so you could use a heavyweight nitrile glove let's go bring you over here sorry about that i should have had them set up for you but these kind of chemical gloves paint stripper gloves sometimes they're they're marketed as paint stripper gloves so these kind are heavy they're not stretchy and, they're, and these work very well for chemicals. These are nitrile gloves for the uh, chemical industry, paint stripper gloves, lab use. You can get them in Amazon, from Amazon. And then, of course, wear some old coveralls because you get that on your clothes, it's not going to come off. I mean, you're going to get glue on yourself. It's going to be smelly. So PPE, I can't um, stress that enough. 
So you've got your coveralls, you've got your thick gloves, not the thin ones. Um, latex gloves work if you don't have a latex allergy. If you do have a latex allergy, go with the thick nitrile gloves, a proper chemical respirator, and um, your, um, your uh, what do you call it, the eye protection. What happened, you see, was when I was taking off the middle one, so in other words, this one, on the starboard side of this red ski, it would not come off. Um, it, it was completely, the glue was completely impervious to even straight acetone, would not come off. The manufacturer says, hey, you know, clean the surface with acetone, make sure there's no oils or residual glue left or the new pads won't stick. Well, wouldn't come off, not even. I mean, it just was stuck like you wouldn't believe. So what I ended up doing, let me show you some tools that I used. What I ended up using was I made a homemade scraper, this thing right here. It's super, super useful. This is a piece of fur. It's kind of old, so it's kind of hard. Um, and then um, on my sander here, on that sander, I was able to uh, round the edges so that it doesn't hurt my hand when I'm holding it and that I can keep sharpening it and it's soft so it won't um, scratch the um, gel coat. Jet skis are not painted. They have something called gel coat which is applied in the mold when they make the jet ski. So the gel coat's applied into the mold and then the fiberglass on top of the jet gel coat. So this is not paint. This is very hard. This is called gel coat. I didn't scratch it at all. Even though, you're, you're, you're going to laugh, even though I used a hammer mallet like this, I used a mallet, I, that's why it's all black on the end here, I used this wooden scraper and WD-40. I literally sprayed WD-40 down on the edge and then pounded it carefully, pop, 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 over and over and over, moved up about an inch, sprayed some more WD-40, moved up another inch, and it took, I don't know, this one pad alone, this one pad alone took, I don't know, an hour, probably more, to um, get the, first I got the pad itself off, and then I was faced with how am I going to get the glue off. So it was, the glue was a thick layer of glue, it was not dissolving in acetone, was not dissolving in my go-to, you know, alcohol and acetone. I was using these two in a 50-50 mix with a stainless steel, an old stainless steel. Don't use plastic. It would, would not come off. Not at all. No way, no how. So what the oil does is it doesn't go after the glue. It goes after the foam and it gets the foam off the glue. So the foam is gone and the glue and, and a little bit of the um, pad was still there. When it, by the time I was done with, with WD-40, and it was a mess. So then, here's another trick I want to show you. You prep a razor blade like this. This is just a regular Stanley sheetrock knife blade, and you prep it by putting several layers of tape on it, covering the whole thing, just exposing the edge, nothing else. As you can see, i got several layers on there. And this is why you want to do this. You don't want to be... Um, poking yourself with the back of the razor blade and you don't want to use a handle because that'll allow you to put too much force on it and then you'll scratch something. So right here, for example, the previous owner had used yet a third glue. I think he used crazy glue here because the pad had started to peel off. So there was a chunk of pad right here that nothing would take off. So I used this just with my hand, no gloves, no handle, no anything, and I was able to get the glue off without tearing up the um, the gel coat. There are a series of, of fine scratches here. From the, you got to be very careful when you use a razor blade, but you can barely see it. And besides, the pad's going to cover it anyway. So right here, I don't know if you can see that, but right here there was a there's a mark about the size of I don't know three quarters where where there was. Um, where there was uh, uh, crazy glue that the previous owner had used to repair the um, the fact that the pad had come out come up. So yeah, so nothing else comes off. Make you got your soft chisel, you've got a lightweight hammer, and you just use oil. Remember, like dissolves like. So if acetone's not going to do it, or alcohol is not going to do it. Then you're going to have to go into the realm of petroleum products. All this stuff stinks, and make sure you have your PPE. So yeah, so I was able to get um, the pad off mechanically just by using oil and using this um, 
scraper and this uh, mallet. And then I switched to this stuff. And I'm wondering if, it, if it's the MEK. Methyl ethyl ketone is a very, very highly volatile petroleum product that works really well on glue. It might be in here. It doesn't say, see, but it's in a spray can, so I'm wondering. Anyway, this worked really well, but what it did was it softened the top surface of the glue, and then I had to work it with my scraper, and then the glue state was still there, and then I would apply it a second time, and a third time, and a fourth time, and a fifth time, and it was so tedious. But every single time I did it, a certain amount came off, and I kept on using my strategy, like we talked about last time, using a bunch of small towels you know you take a towel and cut them up into into sixteenths or sometimes even thirty seconds and you just wipe it off throw it away wipe it off throw it away and then after this was running out and it was i don't know eight o'clock at night and i'm like starting to, to get worried so I, I rummaged around in my garage and i found this and it was a brand new can so um that's important it was a brand new can new old stock and that's important because this evaporates very, very quickly. I don't know if it's the xylene or the toluene, but one of these things evaporates in about, I don't know, three seconds or four seconds, even at low temperatures in my garage, which was 50 degrees, if that. It was cold. It was a cold day, so that'll evaporate faster on a hot day. But anyway, I was able to, to use this stuff on small pieces of towel. When I say small, I mean like this. And then you, you, you apply it and then scrape, you scrape, and then apply the, the, the adhesive remover and then scrape. And every time I did that, a little bit came off. So these two products were able to take adhesives off that all this other stuff was unable to touch. Okay, not acetone, not alcohol, not oil. The oil, in this case, WD-40, took off the the foam it made the foam disconnect from the glue but the glue was still very 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 stuck so what took that off was the the tar the bug and tar remover and the goof off and again a tiny bit you know soak this little tiny towel you know wipe a small area i don't know small area like one inch by two inch scrape 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 and you'll see it turn to the glue turn to gel and then wipe off your your towel right into the garbage can dude i must have had a hundred of these and it took this piece alone took over an hour i mean first pounding off the the foam with the wd-40 and then working off the adhesive so it's now done wow that was so time consuming so i'm getting ready getting ready to lay out the the pads i can see the outlines of the old ones so i'm going to lay them out first and i'm going to draw um, a line with a pencil to make sure that I, they're exactly where i want them it's fairly easy to see where they were because it's a slight discoloration from where the old pads were but i want to lay it down carefully and then my next video i'll show you how to um put them on in a way where you don't get them crooked so that's enough for now so this is the this is part two of the of the series of you know how to get the traction pads on your skis and this is something that you can do i mean it's not super super hard it's just you have to use the right product in this case you know acetone alcohol something with oil and something that dissolves oil and you got to use your ppe i apologize for for i'm um, going over and on and on about this but you got to use proper ppe okay latex gloves that are thick if you are not allergic to latex if you are allergic to latex you want to use paint stripper gloves made of heavy nitrile not thin nitrile a proper chemical respirator eye protection and some old old coveralls because you're not going to get that stuff off your clothes okay everybody so this is a long enough video i'm installing these um uh, traction mats they're made by black tip um they came from um uh water what do you call a watercraft superstore in um in florida and since the oil came from there too and also this oil extractor pump and i'll show you how it how um how to use that too because on a jet ski you have to suck the oil out so right here where's the um right here is the um oil dipstick and you you'll i'll be sticking the uh, the pump nozzle in here and sucking out the oil on in the next couple of videos
All right, so that's enough for one video. So um, I'm Stin Mander, and I'm in the garage today working on my jet ski, and you can too. If you just use the right um, product and understand how to keep yourself safe, you can have professional results. So long, everybody, and thanks for watching.